Okay then gang, so in this lesson we're going to be covering all the basics of the React router, installing it, setting up some basic routes and pages, and adding some links to go to those pages, etc. Now for this series, I'll be using the latest version of the React router package, which includes some new features like loaders, actions, the new form components, and error elements. We'll be using a lot of those features later on in the series, so you'll need to make sure that you use at least the version I'm using or later for those to work. So the version we'll be using is version 6.4 and to install that we just need to open up a terminal and in the root directory of your project type npm install and then it's react-router-dom and then the version number so at 6.4 and press enter and that's going to install that version of the react router dom package. All right so now that's installed we can go ahead and set it up in our application and start adding a few different routes and pages. Now, like I said before, we're using a recent version of React Router. And the way the React Router wants you to work with it in this version is a little bit different to how we'd work with it before this version. So in this lesson, I'll be talking about how we'd normally work with the React Router before this version was released. And I'm doing that because probably 95% of the React code you're going to see at the minute will use this slightly older way of working with it. And there's nothing wrong with still working this way either. It's still a completely valid way to work with the React router, so it's definitely worth learning. But then in the next lesson, and for the rest of the series, we'll be using the more up-to-date approach, which comes packed with additional features. So then, the first thing we're going to do now is import a few things from the React router DOM package inside the root app component. And those things are going to be something called browser router, which is a component that wraps our entire application and allows us to use the router within it. We also need the routes components and the singular routes component, both of those things. These are the things that allow us to actually set up routes. And finally, we need the link component, which we use to create links between different pages. So the way that we set this up now is that we need to wrap our entire application with the browser router component. And then inside this component, we can set up our different routes and specify which components should be rendered for each route. So the way we do this is by using these two components right here, routes and routes. So let's just dive in and do this. I'm going to delete the current template and I'm going to replace that with a main tag. And inside that main tag is where I want all of my page components to be rendered when we go to a specific route. So in that case, this is where I will place my routes. So this is kind of a parent component, this thing, for multiple different route components. And we set up a route component for every route in our application. So let's create a couple here. I'm going to do one for the home page. So we say route, and this can be a closing tag. Now this is going to have two um, props. It's going to have a path prop, which is the path for this route. So if I specify here, for example, forward slash about, it means when I go to forward slash about, this route is going to match that. And we can show an element for that route. Now, the element I want to show is going to be some kind of about page. Yeah. Now, we're not going to do the about component right here. Instead, I just want it to match the index route, which is forward slash. And the element would then be a home component. So I'm going to do a home component right here. Now, we don't have that yet, but don't worry. We'll make it in a minute. What I'm going to do first of all, though, is I'm going to duplicate that so I can create another route. And this route is going to be for the about page. So I can say forward slash about right here. Now, if I want, I can get rid of this forward slash at the start. I don't need that because React Router is going to know that this is kind of like a root route and it's going to add that forward slash for us. So I'm going to leave that off. And to Come over here, we're going to add the about component instead. We need to make these pages now because at the minute they don't exist. So let's go to the source folder, add a new folder called pages. And I'm going to create all my page components inside that folder. You don't have to. This is just the way I like to work sometimes. So I'm going to create a home.js file, first of all, to do the home components. And inside here, I'm actually just going to paste in a component. It's a very, very simple one. So it's called home. We have a diff right here with a class of home. So we can style it perhaps later, an h2, and then a load of lorem ipsum in three paragraph tags. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to create a new component for the about page called about.js. And inside that, again, I'm just going to 
pasting a component. I'm copying this from my course files, by the way, over here. Woohoo! So you can get those if you like. And again, very simple. It's called about. We have a diff with a class name of about, an h2, and some load, uh, and a load of lorem ipsum. So we have those two pages. Next up, we want to import those pages inside this app component because we're using them right here. So let me do a little comment to say pages, and then we will import home from, and then it's going to be dot forward slash into the pages folder, and then we want the home page. I also want to import about. So import about from dot forward slash pages forward slash about. Awesome. So now we have our routes set up and we have these two routes right here. And this means that when I go to forward slash, just forward slash the root path of the site, it's going to take this component right here, the home component, which is all this content, and it's going to render it right here inside the main tag. But when I go to forward slash about, it's going to swap that for the about component, which is all of this stuff right here. So that will be shown inside the main tag instead. All right. So that's how we set up these basic routes. Let's try this out in the browser. OK, so in the browser, we're currently at the root path, which is just forward slash. And we see that home component rendered to the browser. Awesome. And if we go to forward slash about, we should see the about component, which we do. So this is working. Now, there's one problem with this. Every time we go up here and change the path and press enter, we're actually sending a fresh request right to the server to send back a new HTML page. And remember, I said that's not the way that single page applications and React sites, which are single page applications, work. Instead, what we like to do is use the React router to intercept requests to the server to just swap out the content for different pages. And the way we're going to do that is by using special link components or nav link components in our templates. So to create these kind of special anchor tags or links inside React sites, React Router DOM gives us two components we can use. The first one is the link component, but we also have another one called NavLink. And I will explain the difference in a minute. But we can use either of these to create those links that React Router DOM can intercept inside the browser router anywhere. So I'm going to create a header at the top over here. And inside the header, we'll do a nav bar. So nav. And then we'll have a site title first, an H1, which is job a router. And then below that, we will have our different links. Now, to begin with, I will use a link component. And this has a two prop to say where we want the link to go to. Well, I just want to go to forward slash, which is the home page, right? So I will say home right here as well. And then down here, I'm going to do a nav link. So we'll do nav link. It has the same prop too. And this time, I want to go to the about path. So we get the about page, the text can be about. And before we preview this, I just also want to mention one more thing. So you see like this is a path to the root index page, if you like, the index path. Well, when you have that, you don't have to specify the path. And instead, you can just specify this as an index route. So that will do the same thing. It's the same thing as saying the path is equal to forward slash, right? So. We'll just use the index prop right here instead. So we have these two links. One is a link. The next is a nav link. And I will show you the difference in a second. And these will just show up as anchor tags in the actual DOM. However, they will have that added ability where React Router can intercept the request to the server. And instead of sending that and getting a fresh HTML page back, it just swaps out the content. So when we go to this link right here, it will look at the path. And it will match this route right here and say, OK, well, I will put in the about page right now. And for this one, it would put in the home page. OK, so let's save that and preview. All right. So now we can see the title and also these two links at the top home and about. Now we're currently on the home page. If I click about, you can see we get the about component. Go back to home and about. And it's very quick because we're not sending that request to the server anymore. Instead, React Router DOM is just switching the component, which is shown right here. So that's pretty awesome, right? Now, I said before we used a link component for this and a nav link component for that. What is the difference? Well, if we inspect over here, you can see in both cases, we get this href equals forward slash and href equals about. They're both anchor tags. But in this one right here, we have this class attribute. And that's because when we use a nav link component, it can add active classes. So right now we're on the home component, right? So this one right here. But if we go to about, notice we get this class right here. 
and it's equal to active. So that means we can style it a little bit differently when a page is active in the CSS. We don't get that with the normal link component. So when we have links up in the menu, typically I like to use a nav link component instead, just so I can style any active links. All right, so back over here, I'm gonna change this to a nav link instead of a link, just so we get that active class. And then over in the CSS, index.css, I'm just gonna paste in a few styles for the nav bar to make it look a little bit better. So we have the header nav component, which we display as flex. We give it a gap of 16 pixels, meaning there is a gap of 16 pixels between each element inside the nav, okay? And then we justify content to the end, meaning it's gonna sit way over on the right, all the links. The max width is 1,200 pixels and the margin is zero, auto left and right, so it sits in the middle of the page. Now the H1 inside the nav, which is the first element, remember this thing right here, we say margin right auto. And what that does when this is a flex item, which it is because of this, is it puts this way on the left, this H1, and the other two things are gonna sit on the right because of this. So the links will be on the right and this will be on the left. So on the H1, we still have a border bottom, three pixels solid, and it's the primary color, which is this red. All right, so we have the anchor tags as well, text decoration none, padding six pixels, border radius four pixels. Now we style the active link. So remember we have the active class on any nav link when we're on that page and we say give it a background of the primary color when we have that class which is the red color up here all right so let me save that now and preview again all right and that is looking a lot nicer so far we still need to give some margin to this page content right here we'll do that shortly but over here we can see we have the active links styled that looks nice and the nav bar and the title looks a little nicer as well now, like I said at the start of this lesson, along with React Router version 6.4 came a newer way of working with browser routers and routes. And that newer way of working opens up some new features to us. So for the rest of this series, we'll be using that newer approach. And remember, you need at least version 6.4 of the React Router DOM package installed for this newer approach to work. Now, that's not to say that what we've covered in this lesson is outdated or obsolete. It's still a perfectly valid way of working with the React router. And a lot of the applications you see still take this approach, which is why I've covered it in this series. And to be honest, a lot of what we've done here carries over into the newer way of working as well. So it's gonna put you in a good place to learn that.